a trial using fecal microbiota transplants to treat children with autism spectrum disorder, has had lasting improvements on both their GI symptoms and some of their autism symptoms two years after the procedure took place. Welcome to Microbial Minutes. This is ASM's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences. More good FMT news edition. I'm Julie Wolf, and we'll be talking about a paper from Nature Scientific Reports, which suggests that a fecal microbiota transplant is safe and effective as a therapy to treat children with autism spectrum disorder. Previous studies have linked different gut microbiome compositions uh, and make different makeup of those compositions with children who have autism spectrum disorder, or ASD. And a lot of children who have ASD, about 50%, suffer some sort of GI distress, either chronic constipation or frequent diarrhea, something along those lines, which really spurred the um, initial research into looking at the gut microbiota uh, in the first place in this patient cohort. A new trial, uh, an, an old trial, I should say, uh, started about two years ago by this research group, uh, looks at a trial of microbiota transfer therapy, or MTT, um, and they had already shown good results on that gastrointestinal distress and autism-related symptoms. Uh, this MTT is a very specific um, composition of bacteria that come from healthy donors uh, and has been very clearly defined and given to these children, the autism, uh, the ASD children, after their own microbiota has been taken away and largely depleted by use of antibiotics. Now, the question that this research group wants to follow up with is how long will these improvements last? Will those new uh, microbes, the bacteria and the, the other microbes that are in that fecal microbiota transplant, continue to um, thrive and take up that niche to confer those good health benefits. On the next slide, we'll see that this is a two-year follow-up to that initial study. Most of the initial improvements which were observed previously remain, particularly with regard to gut symptoms, but also with regard to uh, uh, autism symptoms. The parents themselves reported a slow and steady reduction of autism symptoms over the two-year uh, period, and we can see that in the right-hand graphs. Graph A and B are looking at the childhood autism rating scale, CAPS, uh, or the GI symptom rating scale, a G -R GSRS. Uh, and really, we're only adding in the bars on the very far right-hand side in each of those graphs um, at the two-year follow-up period. So there had already been some good results based on the initial uh, screening a few weeks or months after the initial procedure. And what this study is showing is that those good results, the uh, benefits to gut health and benefits in um, social cognitive um, abilities, have remained within that those patients who were treated. Uh, it is not only by self-reporting from parents, but a professional evaluator also found that 45% uh, reduction in core autism-related symptoms. Those are things such as language, social interaction, uh, and other behavioral um, interactions in these patients. Um, at the two-year mark, compared to the same evaluation of those children before the, the treatment began, uh, and this correlates to an increase in the phylogenetic diversity as shown in the graph on the lower right-hand side. So here um, you can see that the diversity remained high in all recipients. Um, and there are, it's a little bit small, but there are two different colored dots and each of those dots represents um, a different patient. Uh, and some patients received oral inoculation and some uh, received it um, uh, colonically. Uh, and you can see regardless of that administration route that the diversity within the gut microbiota remains much higher at the two-year period than those patients who were initially um, assessed at, uh, the, at the beginning on the left-hand side there. So of course, these promising results were outlets. Um, Science Daily published the, uh, a a um, summary, and in this, they spoke to um, uh, they spoke to one of the scientists involved, um, who said that we're all excited about the results, but we want to caution uh, the public uh, because, of course, this, there needs to be a larger clinical trial. So this is a still a preclinical trial in the sense that there wasn't an effective control group. There were no children who were not given um, this FMT who were given the exact same. Uh, other uh, additional therapies, and that would be really important to show that the FMT itself was what conferred that benefit to those children.
Uh, but this is very exciting for for everyone to uh, think about how the gut microbiota may be able to may be able to help uh, with uh, both the GI and the autism symptoms within this this patient cohort. Uh, this was written up by U.S. Um, News, which did stress that this is very preliminary. Um, however, when you get to uh, other outlets, such as the Daily Mail, they, they really highlighted the benefits uh, that were seen within the study without necessarily mentioning that this is extremely prelimi preliminary, despite being a study that was conducted in people. Uh, so this study has shown that there are long-term benefits of a, a MTT or an FMT in this autism uh, group. And I think that there is a lot more exciting uh, research yet to come. Uh, stay tuned and subscribe and you will get those updates as they come here on Microbial Minutes. I'd like to thank you for listening and thank Ray Ortega for production. I'm Julie Wolf and I'll be with you next time on Microbial Minutes.